Today we're diving deep into one of the most intense military aviation debates of our time. In the red corner, we have America's apex predator, the F-22 Raptor. And in the blue corner, China's rising dragon, the J-20 Mighty Dragon. Two fifth-generation fighters, two superpowers, one ultimate question. Which jet would dominate the skies? Today, we're breaking down everything from stealth capabilities to dogfighting prowess, from engine power to real-world combat experience. Trust me, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which bird rules the sky. I am Jet Royce, and you are watching The Grid. Let's get into it. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's talk origins. The F-22 Raptor wasn't born yesterday. This beast traces its roots back to the late 1980s, during the height of the Cold War. The US needed something to counter the next generation of Soviet fighters, and boy, did they deliver. The Raptor made its first flight in 1997 and entered service in 2005. It was designed with one mission, absolute air dominance through stealth, speed, and superior technology. Now the J-20, that's China's answer to American air superiority. First flight in 2011, operational since 2017. But here's the thing, while the F-22 was built for dogfights and air-to-air -air combat, the J-20 has a different philosophy. It's designed for long-range interception and what military experts call anti-access area denial, basically keeping enemy forces out of Chinese-controlled airspace. Two different approaches, two different doctrines. Let's see how they stack up. All right, time for the numbers game. Let's put these jets head to head. Speed. The F-22 hits Mach 2.25, while the J-20 tops out around Mach 2. Point to the Raptor. Super Cruise. Here's where it gets interesting. The F-22 can cruise at Mach 1.8 without afterburners. That's huge for fuel efficiency and stealth. The J-20? Not yet but they're working on it with their new WS-15 engine. Combat experience. This is big. The F-22 has seen real action in Iraq, Syria, and Libya. It's been tested in actual combat situations. The J-20? Zero combat experience. And in the world of military aviation, that's a massive disadvantage. Production numbers. Here's where China plays a different game. The US only built 186 F-22s before shutting down production, yeah, you heard that right, only 186. Meanwhile, China has pumped out an estimated 250 to 300 J-20s and counting. Quality versus quantity, classic military strategy debate. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, stealth. The F-22 is what we call all aspects stealth. It's virtually invisible to radar from every angle. The engineers at Lockheed Martin crafted this thing with internal weapon bays, special radar-absorbing materials, and angles that deflect radar waves like a ninja in the sky. The J-20? Well, this is where aviation analysts get critical. Those front canards and exposed engine nozzles? They compromise stealth from the sides and rear. It's got what we call frontal stealth. Hard to detect head-on, but once you get behind it or to the side, it lights up on radar like a Christmas tree. Think of it this way. The F-22 is like a ghost in all directions, while the J-20 is more like a one-way mirror, effective from the front, but not so much everywhere else. The F-22 rocks the Pratt & Whitney F-119, pumping out 35,000 pounds of thrust with full afterburner. This engine has been battle-tested, it's reliable, and it gives the Raptor that super cruise capability I mentioned earlier. Whereas, the J-20 currently uses the WS-10C engine, which honestly doesn't stack up. No super cruise, less thrust, shorter lifespan. But China's working on the WS-15, their answer to the F-119. Problem is, it's still in testing and reportedly having issues with overheating and metallurgy problems. Until that WS-15 is fully operational and proven, the F-22 has a massive advantage in raw power and performance. Time to talk firepower. The F-22 can carry six AIM-120 DMRAM missiles with a range of over 160 kilometers, plus two AIM-96 sidewinders for close-range engagements. 
These are proven, battle-tested weapons with confirmed kills. The J-20 carries 4 to 6 PL-15 missiles with an estimated range of 200 to 300 kilometers, plus PL-10 infrared missiles. On paper, that sounds impressive. But here's the catch. No confirmed combat kills. It's all theoretical performance. During the India-Pakistan military conflict in May 2025, the Chinese-made PL-15 air-to-air -air missile saw its first confirmed combat use. Pakistan's Air Force deployed PL-15 missiles, reportedly firing them from J-10C and JF-17 fighters as part of their response to Indian strikes on terrorist infrastructure. Significantly, Several PL-15 missiles were found largely intact within Indian territory. Indian air defense systems intercepted a number of incoming missiles and drones, and the undetonated debris of the PL-15 recovered on the ground strongly suggests that some missiles failed to perform as intended. So the PL-15's theoretical performance appears impressive. But in the 2025 India-Pakistan conflict, no confirmed kills were attributed solely to its use, and the recovery of intact missiles raises questions about reliability in real combat. The F-22's ANAPG-77 AESA radar and sensor fusion capabilities are legendary. It can detect, track, and engage multiple targets while remaining virtually undetectable, the J-20's systems, still largely unproven in real combat scenarios. Now let's talk dollars and cents, because this stuff isn't cheap. The entire F-22 program cost the U.S. about $67 billion for 187 aircraft. That's roughly $150 million per jet, not including development costs. The J-20's development cost is classified, but estimates put it around $100 million per aircraft. Sounds cheaper, right? But here's the thing. Maintenance costs tell a different story. Flying an F-22 costs about $70,000 per hour. Yeah, you heard that right. $70,000 per hour. The J-20 is estimated at around $40,000 per hour. But remember, those are Chinese estimates, and we don't have independent verification. The F-22 is expensive, but proven. The J-20 might be cheaper, but it's still largely unproven in real-world conditions. Now here's where it gets really interesting. How would these jets perform in actual conflict scenarios? In a potential Taiwan Strait or South China Sea conflict, the J-20 would be operating in its home turf with ground-based radar support and integrated air defense systems. That's a huge advantage. The F-22 would be operating from distant bases but it has the advantage of proven systems and combat-experienced pilots. Key difference is the F-22 excels in open air-to-air -air combat, where its superior agility, stealth, and pilot training shine. The J-20 is optimized for long-range interception and area denial. Different missions, different strengths. But here's the reality check. Most military analysts agree that in a pure dogfight scenario, the F-22's superior stealth, agility, and battle-tested systems would likely give it the edge. Looking ahead, both countries are already working on sixth-generation fighters. The U.S. has the NGAD program, Next Generation Air Dominance, which is basically going to be a system of systems with manned fighters supported by AI-controlled drone wingmen. China's working on their own sixth-gen project with quantum radar resistance and drone swarming capabilities. The arms race isn't slowing down, folks. But here's the thing. The F-22 and J-20 represent two different philosophies. America went for ultra-high-tech, low-quantity superiority. China went for scalable production and regional saturation. Both approaches have their merits. So what's the verdict? Right now, today, the F-22 Raptor still holds the crown. It's got superior stealth, proven combat experience, better engines, and battle-tested systems. The J-20 is impressive and shows China's rapid advancement in aerospace technology, but it's still playing catch-up in key areas. However, and this is important, the J-20 has numbers on its side and is continuously improving. 
Those new WS-15 engines could be a game changer once they're fully operational. The real takeaway? This isn't just about two fighter jets. It's about two superpowers and their different approaches to air warfare. Quality versus quantity. Proven technology versus rapid innovation. What do you think, Team Raptor or Team Dragon? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Smash that like button if you learned something new and don't forget to subscribe for more military tech breakdowns. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.